Does your Husqvarna 435 or similar do this? Pretty much only runs with the choke on. As soon as you give it throttle, it dies. But only when it's hot, only when you've been running it and the whole thing is up to temp. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what's wrong with mine, but we're gonna go along for a ride and figure it out. All right, so I got no idea what the hell is wrong with this thing. My guess is either spark or it's running hyper lean. Um, Cause you saw how it, you saw how it ran um, while idling. It was like barely able to stay alive. And as soon as I opened the throttle, it died. And uh, if I pumped the fuel bulb as much as I possibly could to get cold gas in it and then held down the throttle, put the choke on, and pulled it, and that was the only way I could get it to start, and the only way I could get it to idle was with the choke on, then any time I opened the throttle, it died. I could not get it to start with the throttle all the way open with the thing as flooded as I could possibly get it. So to me, that says either it was not sparking or it was not getting any fuel into it. So before I do anything silly, I'm gonna pull the spark plug and uh, check that. I already pulled the air filter and looked at that air filter. It had some pretty dirty, uh, it's due for a change, but I cleaned it all out. It still didn't run any better. So it's either spark, either the plug is just so totally fouled that it is not able to actually spark and create ignition, or it's just not, the carb is just not putting any fuel into the, into the chamber. Um, so I'm gonna pull the plug, uh, see if it is just like solid black carbon mess and uh, check the gap it's supposed to be 20 thou and uh, yeah I'm probably also going to do a tune up on it just because I bought this thing as a remanufactured unit four years ago and I, I haven't beat the absolute shit out of it but I've, I've it's seen some moderate use and uh, yeah as a manufactured saw with four years on it I probably should replace the air filter um, but it looked alright so spark is first on the list and uh, then maybe fuel filter, although I have not been putting, you know, greasy gas in this, as far as I'm aware, at least. Oh, yeah, and just to reiterate, the issue I'm having is this thing will will not restart when it's hot. If I, I can pull, I could pump that bulb right now, put the choke on, pull it three times, take the choke off, pull it two more times to get it to start right now, no problem. I'm not going to do it because I'm pulling the spark plug and I don't want it to be hot. Plus, I don't want, you know, to smell like gas. Uh, before I put it back in the garage, but it's it's only when it's hot. Once it gets up to temp, if I shut it off, it won't start back up. To me, that says either it's some sort of heat soak issue or something. Something something is doing something, and you know the the, the fire juice ain't getting into the combustion chamber, uh, or potentially the CDI is heating up, and then the the ignition system is just not running while it's hot and it has to wait until it cools down before it starts. I was able to get things started again after I shut it off once. It was giving me issues the other day. It wasn't that big of a problem and then it gave me issues again. It took me 30 minutes before I got things to start again and then I could not get it to start that time that I just showed you. So yeah, but anyway, we're going to get into it. So you got to take the top cover off. It's just these three spring loaded clips. You just take the, the scrunch and you just pop it in there and snap them off. Cover comes on off. There's your spark plug, pull your boot. And if you want the air cleaner out, it's this little tab right here, and then you pull it right out. I'll show you. You know, it's dirty. It needs to be clean, but you know, it's not extremely bad. It's just do. So yeah, we're going to pull this guy out now. Hopefully this is the correct scrunch. It is. Oh, that's in there with uh, excessive amounts of torque. Stand by. All right, let's see if I can get this out by hand. Just had to give it a wallop with the old back of the palm. And uh, we're gonna see if this is, uh... oh yeah, that's uh, that's pretty black. So uh, you can hit a spark plug with a torch, just with a propane torch, burn all the carbon off. I think I'm gonna try doing that. But uh, I'm probably just gonna buy a new one just because they... I'm gonna buy an air filter so it comes with the spark plug. That's air filter, this weird, like, Proprietary Husqvarna filters probably the main cost spark plugs less than five bucks. So probably just gonna throw both of those at it But uh I think I'm gonna try and hit this with the torch first and just see if that fixes the problem in the interim, but uh It's very black Yeah, we'll check the gap that doesn't quite look like 20 thou to me that looks like it's worn out a little bit more Okay, well my suspicions are confirmed. I don't have a 20 thou gauge on this this plug right or on this uh 
gap checker right here, but I do have a 25 and the 25 went in it and it's pretty perfectly a 25. So I'm going to uh, tap on that a little bit and then I think I've got a um, feeler gauge set in here, maybe somewhere. Yeah, right there. And uh, hopefully it has a 20 thou in it. So we'll check it again after I uh, whap on it a bit. Well, I got her on 20 thou now. It's not as carboned as I thought. And looking on in here, I don't know if this will be visible to you in any way in the slightest. Kind of, maybe. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we have some non-insignificant cylinder scoring in there. So I guess you get what you pay for with a remand chainsaw. Okay, so we're going to blast this guy with the propane torch and uh, see if we can uh, get rid of some of this carbon. Hopefully. Or I'll melt the copper tip, one of the two. Oh, that's working real good. Oh yeah, she wasn't even that fouled. Alright, so uh, that looks a lot better now, and I'm going to try not to touch it too much, because it is uh, right toasty. But uh, we'll let that air cool for a minute. And uh, I don't think it was... Uh, I have, a feel, I have a hunch that it was not a fouled spark plug that was causing the problem. I have a feeling that it might be the CDI pack, but... We'll throw it back in there, and uh, we'll let her heat up, and uh, we'll see if uh, she uh, refuses to start again. All right, well, she's back together, and I'm going to see if I can one hand show you that I can get this thing to run cold. So I'm just going to press this guy until it feels firm. And uh, primer bulb isn't filling up all the way, so that's something that I might need to pay attention to. It may actually be a plug fuel filter, but put choke on. Put my knee down on her. Take the choke off. See? Fires up just fine cold. Let's see if she'll fire right back up cold. See, not a problem, cold. So yeah, I don't know. Um, didn't seem like it was a spark plug. Didn't really, I didn't see anything wrong. Air filter definitely was an issue. It definitely seems like it's running lean whenever it doesn't want to run. Um, but if it's not sparking, then that would look like the same thing because it wouldn't matter how much fuel it's getting if uh, it's not actually sparking to ignite it. So I guess I'm gonna have to run her up the temp again and uh, then when she doesn't start, hook up the spark tester and uh, see if I'm getting any spark or not. So that'll be the next step. Well, I went to check compression and just tore the head of the boot right fucking off. So uh, that could explain some no start ignition issues. Compression's at least good though. So I just sort of jammed that back on there and twisted it around and uh, we'll see if it still runs or if I gotta buy a new coil. Well, I took that plug wire and I just jammed it back in there twisted it around a bit and still runs so that's uh miraculous and potentially wasn't the problem but uh i guess i broke the ignition coil so i i guess it'll be the problem for now until it shows up again uh, totally fucking unrelated, but that's the first time I've ever had a screw just fucking twist up like a helically like a spring like that. What the fuck? Huh. Alright, let's put some heat on her, uh, trimming the top of these 4x4s off in this here critter pen I'm building. And uh, hopefully she should get hot enough that uh, we'll be able to see whether or not it starts or not. Or at least, you know, be able to tell whether or not, you know, that boot popping off was... Uh, somewhat related to the problem so let's find out and hopefully i won't cut my legs off because i ain't wearing log pants but i never wear chaps anyway so it's not like it's really any different all right let's give this a shot well i didn't run her too long so she's probably just not hot enough but uh we'll give it a shot some other day uh, but so far, good sign. I, I did buy another coil. I'm not that cheap. I mean, I am cheap because you can see right here, I'm literally using shipworm 
filled driftwood 4x4s to build this thing because, you know, it costs about your life savings to build a deck nowadays. But anyway, I didn't throw the 20 bucks at a new coil just because when you need your chainsaw to work, you need your chainsaw to work, especially when you live three quarter mile down a dead end dirt road and uh, there's only one way in and one way out and uh, there's trees on either side of that way. So, uh, yeah, and we get hurricanes. So I need my chainsaw to work. Uh, so we'll get that in. And uh, in the meantime, we'll see if I can find another excuse to run this thing up temp. And uh, we'll see if it uh, messes up or not. All right, so I got a new air filter from Stens, a new um, ignition coil from China. Um, not a lot of tools, plenty of beer, and not much daylight left. And uh, we're gonna see how far we can get this sucker apart with just the scrunch. And uh, we'll see how hard it is to uh, replace the ignition coil without it. Uh, I have a feeling that these are... Well, I might be able to get those out. We'll see. If we're lucky, I might even be able to replace it with just the scrunch. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a filler gauge to um, set the gap on this. So, we'll see. Luckily, I have one. But, we'll see. Well, that's as far as you can get. You can get the recoil off just fine. And this cover and you can get the spade connector off but there's two allen screws you gotta undo so i'm actually going to grab my feeler gauges and get the gap on that first and uh, then we'll swap it out all right in case you're wondering the gap for mine on this magnet over here is like somewhere between 25 and 30 thou and the side up here is looks to be about seven thou i i got the the six um, in there right now uh, so yeah also uh, these allens up here on the coil are 530 seconds uh, don't know what that is in metric but I'm pretty sure that 530 seconds is something in metric I don't remember what though so I guess as long as I can get a 6 thou feeler gauge in there and uh, you know it's not crazy loose with the 25 we should be good that's some torque there we go Okay, she's back all together. Uh, a little bit harder setting the gap than I expected because I forgot about the other wing of the coil and I forgot to take the gap on that, so whatever. It seems to be right. It's a little bit further out than it was before, but everything went back together okay. So, just primed her, got the choke on, and we'll see if she fires up. Oh, this is going to be hard. Well, I heard a whiff. Running rough, not a good sign. All right, new coil out, old coil back in. Let's see if it runs any better. Well, she's running better now, and but the recoil suddenly broke, so that's interesting. Everything's just falling apart. All right, so that's fine now. I just had to get in there and just get the, uh, the Allen head on the back of the recoil starter, and I just gave it one eighth of a turn, and the whole thing went <laughs> slurped on up, and then I tightened it again. And uh, now it's fine, so I don't know what that was about, but the engine, but the chainsaw runs just fine, revs up, no problem, uh, with the old coil back on it, so it is confirmed, Chinese coil is junk, so uh, valuable lesson here, kids, um, it's not don't buy Chinese, it's just when you buy Chinese parts, prepare to be disappointed, this is probably the third Chinese part that I've had that would totally shit the bed on me immediately out of the box. And uh, the other, like, 20 have all been great. So, yeah. I mean, the QC for... Chi that's the thing, is Chinese parts aren't necessarily made worse. It's that they have terrible quality control. So, they're actually selling you probably all the factory seconds and thirds and sevenths. And uh, that's what you're getting. And they rely on you, the customer, to be the quality control. Because if you get something bad, you send it back in. You say, hey, this shit's broken. They go, great and they send you another one and they just grab it right off the same same conveyor belt and uh and they just keep sending them to you until you either stop uh asking or uh, until you get a good one so uh you make more money like that because they don't have to pay people to check them but anywho i'm gonna go run this thing until it gets good and hot eventually someday not right now because it's that out and uh We'll see if it was just the boot or not. I know I said I was going to do that before, but then I didn't have an opportunity, and then my coil came in, because I was going to replace the coil since the boot came off. But, uh, coil I bought's a piece of shit, so... 
um, yeah, so we'll just run it with this fucky boot, and if the boot's fucky, then, uh, I'll try and thread the boot through and solder it back on or something, we'll figure it out, I'm not, I'm not buying a $50 Husqvarna coil, because I spent, like, $175 on this chainsaw, and I ain't spending 50 bucks on a coil, so, uh, we'll see, I don't know, maybe we'll send that thing back in and get my money back, it was like 20 bucks, so I'm kind of pissed, but, yeah. Alright, so we got the Husqvarna in hand, and I got this red mulberry log over here that I'm going to try and cut into cookies for a project. You know, cookies, flat slabs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, fancy coasters. So uh, I'm going to get this thing good and hot. I'm going to try and also level this splitting block that I made out of the mulberry stump too. And uh, yeah, we're going to get her smoking and uh, we're going to see if uh, she comes back around or not. She handled that, no problem. This mulberry is incredibly yellow. Extremely dense. It's about as dense as live oak. But anyway, I digress. Chainsaw's working just fine with a you know more spark plug boot, so we're gonna work on uh, cutting hookies now. All right. Well, I got most everything I needed cut, cut, and uh, then I was over here sorting through all of my cookies, throwing out the scraps, keeping the ones I wanted. Uh, about two thirds of the way through log, set her down. Uh, she sat there and idled for about maybe 90 seconds and eventually just sort of died and stalled out, but it's hot as Hades out, so I don't really blame it. Real test is going to be, will she crank back up? Well, she might. Let's give her another couple, pu couple pulls and uh, we'll come back if she's uh, running again. Well, here's something. Can you hear that? She's just sort of screaming. Hmm, I wonder if that's the gas vent or something. Ran the primer bulb a couple of times. Seems pretty low. It's sort of hissing. So maybe it's a fuel delivery issue on top of, you know, a messed up coil. I don't know. I'm gonna pull it a couple more times and see if it does anything. Oh yeah, she's definitely fuel delivery. That bulb is nearly empty pumping it pulls nothing in every time I open the gas cap it does this hisses and it's bubbling in there now squeaking so I think the vent is plugged or something but it is not pulling fuel is not circulating through because I shut this off pump that bulb you know whole pile of times you know opened up the gas cap let it vent some air you know, we got about a quarter tank in there, and then yank on it, it runs. Open up the throttle, runs full tilt, and then dies after about five seconds. And you look, and the primer bulb's empty. So I think, um, I think she's not getting fuel. And also, I broke the ignition coil during diagnostics, which was a great red herring. So. Uh, I guess let's get her on the bench and uh, see if we can find something up with the fuel system. Well, conveniently, we just brought the workbench and it's out here on the slab. So, she's been sitting in the sun while I went and ate lunch for the last 30 minutes. And I came over here, set her up on top, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but she is just a furiously bubbling. Um, I'm thinking it's basically vapor lock. So, she's been sitting in the sun baking for the last 30 minutes and it is hot as all... I'll get out today. Uh, I think I drank about half a gallon of water when I walked in. I'd only been working for about an hour. And yeah, she's she slowed down now, but it was just bobbling. So yeah, that's interesting. I'm gonna look up how to uh, how to get to the vent and uh, clean that if it does indeed have a vent, and uh, I'll get back to you. All right. Well, she's been sitting out in the shade for about two hours, and the primer bulb feels firm again so we're gonna give her a yank and hopefully she starts well that's probably on me there let me give that another shot Quick, quick peek at that primer bulb. 
She looks to be completely full. Oh yeah, totally firm. I filled up all the gas, by the way, so we'll open this up. Not hissing, not bubbling. So yeah, that seems like some sort of vapor lock fuel vent sort of thing. Now I'm actually going to look at where the fuel vent is now after procrastinating for a couple hours. All right, well, it took some fiddling and some disassembly, but we finally got to the vent. It's this little nipple down in here, back behind the handle. I don't think I actually, well, I need to take as much of the handle off as I did, but this is the vent, so I'm going to try and pull that out, see if it's clogged, and hopefully it doesn't spray gasoline right into my eyeball. That would be nice if it didn't do that. And yeah, I don't got needle noses in here, so that's a regrettable moment. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I had to take all that apart, uh, took the bar off, took the uh, um, clutch off, took top cover off, uh, took the uh, recoil starter off. I don't think I needed to take all that off, but I did anyway. And then I took these two screws out for the handle, and I think I only needed to take that one out, but I took this one out uh, just for shits and giggles. Uh, took this screw out down here that holds on the um, chain stop, whatever you want to call it, that thing. And this one over here, this is the one special screw, it's just sort of a peg. Um, took that one out off of the recoil. And then, do you mind hushing up? Huh? Rude. And I'm just gonna pull this off before I lose it. And then, over yonder, I pulled this one screw out over here. And that gave me enough wiggle to separate the two halves of the saw. And we can spin it over here and just sort of peel it far enough apart to get down in here at the vent. If you go any more, you're gonna pull these um, fuel lines off. So we're not going to do that. All right, well, there's the vent. Got that out. Doesn't really look plugged to me, but it might be plugged microscopically. Um, I know it was just, fuel was just coming out of this at one point because I was pressing the bulb and it was just like bleh, belching out of there when I had the thing filled up to the brim. I don't know if this has some sort of like microscopic, like porous structure that is clogged in a way that is not visible to me, but it doesn't look plugged. But uh, I'm gonna run some compressed air through this and uh, so hopefully it'll fix. Otherwise I'm gonna buy a new one and then take this thing back apart again. So I don't have any carb cleaner here, but I do have mass airflow sensor cleaner. And I don't know how I ended up with this stuff. I think I bought a combo pack with carb cleaner and it just came with it. But none of my junk has mass airflow sensors. They all have map sensors. So yeah, I'm gonna waste this stuff on this and uh, it should hopefully not melt nylon. I mean, I guess if gasoline doesn't melt it, then this stuff sure as hell ain't. And uh, hopefully it'll clean up for me. All right, well that's been maths cleansed and uh, it's back in there. And uh, we're gonna slap it all back together and hopefully it makes a difference and uh, I don't have to buy any more garbage. All right, she's back together. Let's see if that made a difference or not. At the very least, I expect it to, you know, start. Otherwise we've got a serious problem. Well, it's definitely not worse. That's a good sign. All right, now I just gotta get up to temp again, so now I gotta find something to cut on. All right, new Chinese coil just came in, so let's give this one more go. Well, Chinese garbage is Chinese garbage. Guess we're sending this back too. All right, enough with the fancy jump cuts. Uh, the old coil is back in. See right here, there's the shiny new coil. 
back in its box destined for going back to Amazon and old coil. Not bad for a saw that doesn't have a spark plug boot soldered to it. All right, yeah, lesson learned here, kids. Um, don't buy Chinese parts unless you're ready to be disappointed. And I'm always disappointed. That's my secret. All right, raining a bit. Probably 80 degrees out, 100% humidity. And yeah, we're gonna hack up this live oak limb that came down. Nothing too crazy. And uh, we'll see if it starts vapor locking. I'm wondering if it's ambient air temperature related. I haven't really run this thing much since I uh, cleaned the vent. And uh, then if it's uh, not um, stalled out, we're not going to hack up that. We're going to hack up that over there. I had a quarter of a big old live oak come down. I got some logs I cut up. I had a cousin who said he was going to come get it for firewood. And he hacked on it a little bit. And then he uh, hadn't been back in two months. So I guess I should probably take care of that instead of waiting on him. So, uh. I'm going to fire this bad boy up and hack away and uh, I'll let you know when uh, something bad happens or when something good happens. Let's hope for the best. Alright, logs are loaded. Let's see if she fires up. Not the best sign. She's still bored. I wonder where the vacuum leak could be. I can't possibly imagine where there would be a vacuum leak. I really hope it's not someplace sucking a whole bunch of fucking sand and leaves directly into the fucking manifold. That'd suck. That was a fuck huge vacuum leak. Oh man, let's go crank her over and see if that fixes something. Gotta love old mom's truck. Oh man, this computer is gonna, it's gonna take forever to relearn that fucking idle. Oh man. Well, that would explain why my car stalls out whenever I make a hard left. All right, truck's empty. We're over here now to this, about a, third of a live oak that came down just full of poison ivy beautiful uh and grape the grape is probably what killed it um off screen i pri or i ran the primer bulb a couple of times pulled it she fired up just fine so i'm thinking it's a temperature dependent vapor lock i also didn't run it terribly hot there and uh yeah this thing uh came down probably oh i see what happened that it was sitting on that and then that broke. So this is a real safe operating environment over here. So I'm just going to come whack on it some more. Also that right there, that's being held up by a section that's like six by two. That's just holding up that big fuck huge, like 30 inch chunk of live oak, which is a very dense wood. So yeah, I'm just gonna get all up under here and just hack all upon this. Um, let me see if this is, okay, well, at least that won't kill me, probably, at the very least. Yeah, fun. Welcome to my life. Okay, so that broke. That guy over there broke, and this guy all broke simultaneously, and the whole thing dropped about four foot. And uh, that's what I was saying. This is all that's holding up this big, huge chunk of trees, that little sliver of bark right there that it's just sort of sitting on. That's the section that came down 10 years ago. It was the first thing I ever used a chainsaw on. That was the first time I ever used a chainsaw was cutting that up. That was real fun. And it was an electric one. Uh, and not the fancy kind with batteries. I'm talking about the kind, you know, with an extension cord. So, uh, yeah. Eventually, that's going to come off. And uh, then I can actually work on this entire thing in quasi-safety. Uh, really, I shouldn't be fucking with this at all, but I'm an idiot. So I'm going to get to it, I guess. Well, got Spanish moss jammed up in the clutch, so now she's uh, doing one of those. So, 
Guess it's time to go get the scrunch and piss on the chainsaw. Stand by. Yeah, she toasty. Ooh, got a heat temper on that. That's probably not good for it. Don't know what caused that to suddenly bind up like it did, because I thought the clutch was burnt, but I don't see anything in there. Huh. It's red hot, though. Well, guess I'm going to pull that chain. Oh, All right, just ran the chainsaw ragged. Blade's about dull. I sharpened it immediately before this problem occurred. That's live oak for you. You basically have to cut through a half inch ring of dirt before you can actually get to the wood because this stuff has such thick bark and it's all covered in epiphytes and Spanish moss and it gets fills up with sand and dirt and collects and that's how all the resurrection fern and all that stuff grows. But yeah, hacked it all apart. Cut me a swath on through here. This is all poison ivy, by the way, all those vines right there. You see it, you know, fruiting. The most potent, um, whatever it is, erushidol, uric acid, erushidic acid, whatever the hell it is. The, the most potent, potent poison in the ivy is uh, on the fruits. And uh, I was just, you know, huffing in all of this poison ivy sawdust. Last time I checked, like two months ago, I wasn't allergic to poison ivy still. So, uh, yeah, either I'm still not, I'm going to be, or I'm already dead. Uh, we'll find out. If you're seeing this video, I somehow survived. Or uh, somebody finished editing the video and uploaded it post-mortem, one of the two. So, chainsaw's been sitting for a minute. Uh, just since I started filming, I'm going to start sorting all of this stuff out, stacking logs, getting limbs out, and uh, we'll see if she fires up in 5-10 minutes, and if I can get it going... I'm going to say it's fixed, and it may just be a seasonal issue. Gave her one pump at the primer bulb, yanked her about three times, fired right to life. So, I think I fixed it. I think it was uh, that uh, plug in the gas vent, or something like that. Um, it's only like 80-something out today. It's been 90, it was doing, it was 90-something the last couple of times it's been doing it. So, either clearing that vent, or... Uh, just it not being so oppressively hot. This fixed it. Um, I'm thinking the vent. But, yeah. I think she's finally fixed. Um, I still got a lot more work ahead of me. So, uh, you may be seeing more of this if, uh, if I'm, uh, ends up not being the problem. But, anyway, I digress. Uh, if this video helps you, go down there, give it a like, comment, tell me, uh, tell me if you think it's actually something else. Um, or if, uh, you had a similar problem and it ended up being, you know, carburetor or something like that something other than heat soak or vapor lock and uh yeah if you want to see uh, more st stupid useless videos that uh, go on for way 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 too long uh go down there and smash that subscribe button until next time i'm out